enterprise. We're a social enterprise with the mission to mobilize a community of data scientists across Africa to solve the most pressing problems of the region. Um, our community does, of course, extend beyond Africa, but our focus has always been um, on African data scientists and African data challenges. Um, principally, we solve these challenges by hosting machine learning competitions. Um, and while we do intend on expanding into other areas, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, um, at the moment, the thing that we do best is data science competitions. Um, so why do we think data science competitions have the ability to really solve African problems? Um, the data science competitions that we host, they have the potential to draw the best possible solutions from a very wide pool of talent. Um, we have more than 28,000 users on the platform. That's a lot of ideas. That's a lot of um, skills and talent and passion and enthusiasm, a lot of creativity in problem solving. And we believe that um, by pooling this talent and, and trying to tap into such a, such a broad talent range, we can offer the best possible solutions to some really complicated challenges. So Zindi, so far, as I said, we are um, coming up to three years old. We'll be three years old in September. Uh, we have more than 28,000 data scientists registered on Zindi. Most of those are in Africa. I, I think something like 70 or 80% of those are in Africa. I don't know the number or hand. Um, with, with the rest of the data scientists coming from India, from Europe, from Asia, um, the Americas, all over the world. Um, we have at least 45 countries represented that we can say with certainty. I suspect, in fact, we have a user in every country in Africa, but we, we don't have the data to make that claim just yet. Um, and, and something that we're really, really proud of is that 25% of our users are female. That's in line with the global average for, for tech and IT. And so for us to get such a high um, percentage of female users in a, in a niche field like data science and machine learning and in Africa, particularly where traditionally female participation in IT has been very low, uh, we're really, really proud of that. And we're proud of all our, our Zindi ladies. We've actually just recently wrapped up a women's mentorship program that was entirely female mentored and all participants were female and it's something that we it's, it's one of uh something that's very close to our heart um okay i just want to make sure there's nothing in the chat or the q and a okay cool so we're fine for now so um in the last two and a half years or so we've launched more than 150 competitions and hackathons on zindi um, almost all of that has been from um, local data, African data. Um, the, we get data sets from NGOs, from startups, from big organizations, from governments, uh, from research groups. Our, we, we really um, are very lucky to work with so many different types of organizations um, to, to run our competitions at hackathons. And what that means is that all of our all of our data and all of our competitions uh, are real. Um, I know that some other data science competitions have dummy data sets or um, heavily manipulated data that doesn't reflect the real world. Our data sets come from the real world and the models that our users create go back out into the real world to, to solve problems. Uh, we get something, anything up to 1500 data scientists competing in a competition. Uh, we have so far given out a quarter of a million US dollars in prizes to data scientists, which is something that I think is really incredible. Um, and you may have heard of Remoja Hack Africa. We've um, hosted two versions of the event. And as far as we know, it's the largest Pan-African virtual hackathon ever hosted. 
Um, this year, we saw 1,100 students join us from 120 universities all across Africa. So if you are a university student uh, interested in data science, make sure you sign up for Mojahack Africa 2022. It's going to be even bigger and better. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some Ugandan Zindi competitions. Um, we've really, it's been really um, good to work with a lot of Ugandan organizations. Um, we've worked with several over the last few years, um, most notably Airquo, uh, who is, uh, if you don't know Airquo, they're an air quality monitoring and research organization. Um, we've run two competitions with them. Um, the biggest one was this this competition to predict air quality using weather data. Uh, I really like that competition because the winners or, or two of the winners were contracted by Airco to help deploy the model, and the model has in fact been deployed. And so um, that's a really it's a great success story for us because the models are working in real time to, to give air quality predictions in Kampala, um, which is really exciting. Uh, we've also recently run a competition uh, with uh, the AIA Research Lab at Makerere University to classify audio relating to agriculture. Um, this challenge basically takes snippets from radio and asks the, asks the users to create a model that can recognize audio key, um, agriculture keywords in the audio. Um, this, this model is going towards um, some kind of real-time tool to track agricultural trends in um, Uganda and beyond, uh, with the idea that if, if there's some mention of a new disease, the audio comes from um, community radio stations all over all over Uganda. Uh, it's both in Luganda and in English. And the idea is that it, this model will be tracking a lot of audio data in real time and should be able to detect uh, trends like new pests, new diseases, um, before a human monitor can do so. Um, we've also run financial challenges. Uh, particularly, we ran a challenge for a startup called Zente, um, and that was the challenge was to build a model that could detect fraudulent activity on the platform. Um, and then, more recently, and I'll talk about this in more detail, we have launched, uh, or we are launching, a, a passion fruit disease um, image classification challenge. Um, and the, the challenge is to basically take photo, photo, photographs and images of passion fruits and to um, classify whether they're diseased or healthy. Okay, so that's a little bit about some um, Ugandan competitions. Um, I'm going to stop there because I'd like to also give some time for people to ask questions if there are any. Um, and then I'm I'm going to do a walkthrough now of the platform and um, and talk to you a little about a little bit about the hackathon that we're launching, which we'll launch right after this talk. Are there any questions or comments at this stage? I know it's early in the morning, so maybe we're still waking up. But as you see, at least one. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, please ask your questions in the Q and A. Um, that does also mean that I can I can carry on and um, and I'll just keep an eye on the Q and A so that you guys can ask your questions and I'll respond when I see them. Okay, so um, that's. Uh, I hope a, a good introduction to Cindy and what we do and why we do it. Um, so uh, if you are keen, you can whoops, you can go to cindy.africa forward slash sign up if you haven't done so already. 
Um, I'm going to do a little walkthrough of the platform and then we can talk about the, the hackathon that we're launching now. So let me just stop sharing. Sorry. There we go. No, that's not what I want. That's what I want. Okay. So you should be able to see my homepage. Um, okay. So uh, this is uh, your landing page for Zindi. Um, as you can see, there's uh, various um, various sections. We have competitions, hackathons, data scientists, discussions, a jobs portal, and a learning center. I'm going to just click sign in. If you haven't signed in, there's an option to sign up there. So I've signed in already. Okay, so, the, so I'll just quickly walk you through the platform and then we can talk uh, specifically about the hackathon itself. Um, so uh, very briefly, if you are interested in hack in competitions, your competitions appear under the competition tab, of course. Um, these are currently ranked by prizes, prize money. So um, you can you can see the current competitions that are open here. Um, there are a number of open competitions with prizes ranging from nearly 10,000 US dollars down to around 1,000 US dollars. So those are our prized competitions. We also have a number of points competitions on the platform. At the moment, we have just the one. Um, this gives you Zindi points, uh, which uh, contribute to your ranking on the leaderboard. And then we have a whole host of what we call knowledge competitions, which are always open. And they're a really great place for uh, people to learn uh, various skills. You can see that the the different competitions are tagged so you can see okay well i want to learn about nlp so then there are nlp challenges um etc you can also search via this tag system here so if you're looking for a classification challenge and uh, you want to work in um say uh, where is i don't see finance it's strange uh, but anyway, you can um, you can use these tags to sort. Um, so here you can see all the classification challenges that we currently offer. Um, and you can also you can also search uh, by the search bar here. So if I search Uganda, um, you can see that Ugandan specific challenges come up. So when I say Ugandan specific challenges, these these marks here mean that the the data set comes from Uganda. It doesn't mean that uh, users are limited to being from Uganda. Um, we can also filter via competitions that are active. So you can see only active competitions. And then we can choose the type of reward. So for instance, if I'm not interested in, in competing for prize money, I can just go to knowledge options and then search through all of the knowledge competitions. And you can see that there are a fair number. Okay, so those are competitions. Hackathons, the layout and format is identical to a competition, but a hackathon is just usually a much uh, shorter time frame, and often the access is limited. So for instance, this is the hackathon that we'll be launching today for you guys, and uh, access is password control, um, so that only certain people can participate. Uh, the data scientist is just a ranked list of um, of rankings. So unless you're a very competitive data scientist, you don't need to worry too much about this. But you can also go and have a look here at some of our leading data scientists on the platform and see more about them. Um, oops, sorry. Dr. Fad is currently on top. He um, 
he's now actually um, head of data, data finance at Kenyan Bank. So he's gone quite far in his career. Um, and here you can see Lawrence, who I introduced earlier. Um, okay, so then other than that, we have a learning center. At the moment, our learning platform is a collection of tutorials and it's not uh, all that easy to navigate. Uh, as you can see, it's essentially just a list of tutorials. Um, this includes um, meet the winners. Uh, so you can see how people approach the challenge. So you can learn things. We usually share their notebooks. Um, there you can see they've shared their GitHub repository. Um, so that's um, a, a really good way to learn. A lot of people use the, those um, notebooks to learn. Uh, we also include a lot of um, introductory tutorials, for instance, a beginner's guide, guide to scraping social media or how to approach a machine learning project, um, that kind of thing. Um, we are working on overhauling this so that it's easier to search. And uh, Zindi does also have really big plans in the future to build a, a much more functional and useful learning center. We've, we've realized that um, Zindi is a place that people primarily come to learn now. And so we're catering for that in the future with, um, with more learning resources, a better organization, study groups, um, and, and other support for, for learning on the platform. So keep an eye out for that. And then I just want to highlight quickly our discussion forum. Um, each competition and hackathon has its own dedicated discussion forum. You can also go and look at the discussion forum yourself. And for instance, you can see um, somebody has uh, posted that that they are missing some IDs. And then um, generally speaking, our community is really supportive and good, and they share some, some possible solutions. So um, we, we find the discussion forum uh, a really useful place because we can stay in touch with our community. The people also share their notebooks after a challenge. And so on. Um, yeah. And then finally, we have a jobs portal uh, where at the moment there aren't too many jobs. Uh, there are a fair number of jobs, but I am going wrong. Um, so you can have a look here. Uh, for instance, at the moment, there's an organization called Benchy.ai that we've worked with for some time looking for a job. Um, you can see a job description, responsibilities, qualifications, and then you can apply apply via the Zindi platform. So if I click apply, you can add your, your CV here and apply. Um, again, we're also looking at building out our jobs platform to make sure that it is more, um, it's taking into account the work that you've done on the Zindi platform. So there's a lot of um, things to come here as well. And then just so that you know, we do also have an inbox that uh, you can use to communicate privately. Um, you can use private messages here. Um, and it works very similarly to the to the discussion, to the discussion boards. Okay, so I want to talk um, about your hackathon. Let me just change what I'm sharing. Yeah. So uh, we've partnered with the Marconi AI Lab at Makarere University to put together a hackathon where you are asked to identify whether a passion fruit in an image is diseased or healthy. Um, we have another version of this of this challenge open as a competition. So it is a slightly more complicated version and that'll be open in a few weeks or so. Um, so if you'd like to sign up, there's the link, zindi.africa forward slash hackathons forward slash Uganda 2021. You can also just navigate uh, to the hackathon section of the website and find it manually there. Uh, this is your password. So I'll show you how this works now. Um, and then I'll show you briefly how to make a submission. Um, so let me share that. Ah, 
Okay. And I see there's a question of only 15 submissions. That is a really good question. I will raise that with my data scientist, Amy, who she's, she takes responsibility for competitions. I don't know exactly why the submissions, number of submissions are so low. Um, okay, so you should be able to see my screen. Um, so I'm gonna go to hackathons. Here is your hackathon. Here is your, um, your prize money. Please note that this hackathon is only open to Ugandans and uh, people living in Uganda. So to sign up, you're gonna click here. Um, you can see from this um, info page, everything you need to know about the hackathon. So as I said, you can contact the organizers, but we have the, the password, so that's easy. Um, there's a description of the challenge and why it matters. So obviously, um, pests and diseases cause uh, losses in yields and losses in um, productivity for farmers. Um, and uh, this, in theory, will be this model will be able to be built out into a diagnostic platform using a low cost handheld diagnostic device uh, based on a Raspberry Pi and use this machine learning technique. So essentially the model will be running on a device and the device can be used offline to look at disease, a diseased fruit and identify whether, or look at a fruit that may be diseased and identify whether it's diseased or not. And this will give farmers a better chance to treat the disease effectively. Okay, so, um, in terms of rules, you can work in teams. Um, please don't share your code outside of your team. So code sharing is a, is a violation of the rules. Um, if you need uh, help in how to set up a team, I can explain that. Um, there's a little bit about the data, uh, maximum submissions. The maximum submissions are 15. I will have to ask, um, ask my data scientist, as I said, and I'll confirm that with you all after this. Um, and then just an explanation, if you haven't participated in a Zindi competition before, we have a public leaderboard as well as a private leaderboard. So when you make a submission, you will be scored on the public leaderboard. You are also scored against a, a private data set that includes a larger portion of the data, and this is to prevent overfitting. So at the end of the competition, the leaderboard will change over from public to private, and your private leaderboard score will determine your final rank. So the, the data split here is 30% public, 70% private. Um, if you're in the top five, we'll request your code. So you don't submit code on Zindi, you submit a sample file or a submission file, a CSV file with, with scores, test scores. Um, but we request your code if you rank highly and then we check your code to make sure that it works as you said it works essentially. Um, Evaluation is accuracy for this um, for this challenge, and here you have an explanation of what your submission file should look like. This is really important. If it doesn't look like this, you're going to get an error when you submit the file. So please make sure you follow the structure. The hackathon starts in a little under a little under an hour, and will run through to this evening. Um, Prizes, the first place prize is, is um, 300,000. Now I don't know off the top of my head the Ugandan currency, and that's terrible. Um, I should know that, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, right, so here we have um, some information about the data. Um, the data is 2064 images resized to 512 by 512 pixels and they've been tagged either as healthy or brown spot or woodiness. Um, the data set is about 200 megabytes, so not, uh, too, not too large a data set. A little bit more about the, the images and a little bit about the, the, data, the, the files available. So you have a, a starter notebook that you can use if you are unsure about how to 
to approach this challenge. We we share starting metrics with a lot of our challenges, so always have a look at that. It's an easy way to get started if you don't know where to begin. We have the image data. We have a sample submission file. This is um, basically a, a blank and null file that you can submit and that will allow you to see the format required. And then we have a training set and a test set. Um, so yeah, so, so that's essentially it for you to join the hackathon. We're gonna click join hackathon. You have some terms and conditions here and then we put in the secret code, which is DLIX accept the conditions and join. And now I, you can see that I've joined. Uh, in order to make a submission, I'm gonna quickly download the sample submission file. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And then I'm just to illustrate how easy it is to make a submission, I'm going to go to the submit button. I've clicked the submit button now. I'm going to just drag and drop this. You can also select the file, but for now it's easier to just drop the file. This image doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I can just do this again. Um, So you can make a comment and that's just so that you can keep track for yourself of what submission you've made. I'm going to click submit. Here I've made the submission, but you can see that the submission is in error because it's a missing entry. So um, that needs to be corrected, obviously. Um, and then if it was a successful submission, I would show up here on the leaderboard with a score. Currently I'm on the leaderboard, but I don't have a score. And you can see how many submissions I've made here. Okay, so questions. Uh, there I see this question about the data format, and I think I've answered that. The data is in image format. Um, let me make sure there isn't anything else. There's also another question in the chat. Another in the question. Chat. In the chat um only 15 submissions i yeah we've addressed that and then can we use this data set for study purposes after this hackathon and publish the findings so um that is a question that comes up a lot with cindy um the trick is to is generally speaking we need to um we need to confirm for each data set so i will have to have to confirm with that and come back to you. This is a data set that's coming from um, the Marconi lab at Makarere University. So I would guess that they'd be comfortable with you using the data set for research purposes. Generally speaking, we are we find that that um, it's okay to use data sets for research purposes, and we just ask that Cindy is acknowledged as being the originator of the data set, as along with the of course the, the people who provided the data set. So there should be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there should be uh, no problem with using the data set, but I will have to confirm that with you. Um, I think the easiest would be for you to send me an email. Um, I'm putting my email address in chat. You can just pop me an email to, to follow up on that question. Um, other questions, how can we fix the submission error? Well, that is part of the challenge. Um, I'm not going to answer that question. Um, generally speaking, there will be some indication of, of what was wrong with your submission. Um, I'd encourage you to work with others um, as much as you can, ask questions. There are plenty of people on the discussion forums willing to help. I'm sure there are other people uh, at Indaba X Uganda who are around and available to assist. Um, and so I think that's, yeah, I think that's part of the challenge. And usually it's it's a matter of formatting your file right out. Uh, yeah, 
yes, of course, if you use the data, you have to acknowledge the, the creator of that data or collector of that data. Um, I can't download the starter notebook. Um, Millicent, I'm not sure how to help you. I had no problem downloading the starter notebook. I can only suggest that you, you make sure that you've joined the challenge and that you try again. Let me just confirm for you. Uh, okay, we've had this before. Oops. Uh, sorry. We've had this error before, it, and it's a bug that I thought we had fixed. Um, I think, let me just go back there. I think I know how to, how to make it happen. Um, hackathons. I think the correct thing to do. Yes, no, that's not it either. Yes, okay. So um, what you need to do, and it's a workaround, unfortunately, it's a bug that I think we fixed for competitions, but it, it may be persisting for hackathons. Um, you need to click on the starter notebook. It's going to open this in a new page. And then if you say Control S, it will give you the option to save it as a, a Python notebook file. So click on the link, you'll get this HTML page and then just control S to save. Um, and I'm going to put that on our bug list straight away to make sure that that problem is fixed as soon as possible. Okay, let me just see any further questions. Yeah, there we go. Control S saves it. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for the questions. Thanks to Mohammed for the for the answer. Um, are there any other questions? I'm, I've reached the end of my time. I can answer one other question if anybody has one. Uh, seemingly not. Uh, maybe we we'll give it a minute or so and we, we see if we can get anybody else asking a question. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, otherwise, thanks very much for your time. Thank you everybody for listening. I hope that you, um, I hope that you participate in the hackathon. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, and uh, for those of you that are new to Zindi or just signing up for the first time, uh, welcome. Uh, why is it open only to Uganda? That's because this is the Uganda deep learning in Java. Um, we, if we open it, I, uh, and I'm speaking from experience here, if we opened it to the rest of the continent, you will have a lot of data scientists essentially just crashing your party. Um, they're enthusiastic, but also it means that um, people from Uganda in a way are, are, can be excluded or squeezed out. The, the idea that is that these hackathons at Indaba X are principally learning hackathons. Uh, of course, there is a prize involved, but we're hosting them so that people can can sign up and join and learn in a safe environment. And a lot of people find um, the, the competitive data science environment quite intimidating. So the um, so this, essentially the answer is to make it a safer and friendlier and more welcoming environment for, for those of you in Uganda and those of you participating in the Indaba X. Um, OK, I see one question um, from Joan. You said we don't sub submit code, so what do we submit? Um, as I explained, if you take a look at the sample submission file, it is a CSV file. Um, you can look at the, um, sorry, you can look at the, under the info page, under evaluation, there's an indication of what the submission file should look like. Um, so that's, um, 
that's essentially the format uh, and it is essentially the output of your model so you need to run your machine learning model in uh, python or in colab um, output the data in a specific way and then um, export that as a csv file and that is the file that you upload um, is it possible to export this data set to Colab without downloading it first? Yes, it is. We usually share a Google Drive link and I will ask um, my data science colleague to uh, put a, a Google Drive link into the discussion forum. Um, that'll be there in the next hour or so. I make a note of that. Um, Eugene, is it okay that we're going over time? Sorry? Is it, is it okay that we're going over time or do I need to wrap up? Uh, I think uh, it's important that people understand what we, we are going to do before we actually get into it. So I think uh, it is fine that uh, uh, everybody gets to understand what we're going to do. So I think we're okay. Uh, okay. Maybe we can wrap up within 10 minutes or so, uh, then we can begin. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, so the deadline for submissions, you can see that it, uh, the hackathon closes at 8.30 this evening, 8.30 Ugandan time. Sorry, that's incorrect. That should be, that's 8.30 GMT. 8.30 um, GMT, that should be uh, 10, 10.30? Uh, just a second, let me just check. Yeah, or 10 or 11.30, I think Uganda's on East African time. Yeah, EAT. So it's, if this yeah, is yeah, this seconds. plus one GMT or plus two? Plus three. Should be plus three GMT. Plus three GMT. Yeah, so plus three GMT, uh, that is East African time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is, uh, so it is still the same. It is 8.30. Uh, did you want this to go beyond this time? Um, that's a discussion that we've had with Bruno, but that's, I, I assume that that time is correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe we shall just confirm uh, in case something comes up. We shall have to let now uh, on on the Zindi platform. Is it possible? Uh, I think uh, the competitors can still check right here on the time and see if there's any change that that is. Yes, that, that, and and we'll and we'll post an update in the discussion forum as well. If okay. that's, Perfect. If Perfect. That, if if the if the if it changes, but there you okay. can see it ends in twelve okay. hours. Okay. Cool. Um. The I, I'm not sure that I, and there's a question, are there only beginner data scientists in Uganda? Um, I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. No. I would say no, we have a lot of- I, I can take of, that. I, I sure. can take that, uh, I can take that Kennedy. So uh, Muhammad, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think uh, I can relate this with his earlier question of why, uh, of why it is only open for Uganda and then uh, this one comes into play. So, uh, mm -hmm. Muhammad, uh, I, I think uh, we got a very vivid explanation from Kennedy on uh, why this is important. So if we have this competition in Ethiopia, the Ethiopians will be given a priority. If we have it in Malawi, Malawians will be given priority. So it, it is the same in the same essence, uh, the spirit that we can actually encourage the individuals in that, that particular country to also contribute to, to, the, to the body of knowledge in this regard. So uh, no, no bad feeling really. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, we want to be uh, realistic uh, because if we make it open for everybody, yeah, uh, then yeah, uh, everybody else can get into the into the cake, and uh, uh, we, we shall yeah. Uh, hopefully, that exactly. makes some sense for you, Muhammad. Thanks, thanks, uh, Eugene. That's a perfect answer. Um, okay, so I see. Should we begin now? Yes, the the hackathon's open. You can start as soon as you like. Uh, the deadline for submissions I've answered. Are we to be given data? Yes, the data is here under the data tab. Um, you can download the images.zip is your principal data file. But then there's an explanation here as well. Um, images contains the images, test.csv contains IDs for the test set, and then train.csv contains image IDs for the train set. So there's all the information that you need right there. Thanks, Bruno. Made some clarifications there as well. Okay, great. Um, 
I think that then uh, concludes. I think I've said everything I'd like to say. I'd like to wish you all really good luck. Um, I hope that it's an enjoyable experience I, for those of you who are starting or trying a hackathon for the first time. Don't be intimidated. Uh, it's a really fantastic way to learn. It's a way to put your theory, theoretical skills into practice in a safe and uh, supportive environment. Ask your questions, talk to each other about your approaches. We encourage you not to share code with each other. If we, if we recognize um, matching code, that's obviously a problem, but share your ideas and communicate and um, hopefully the, the best data scientists will win. Okay. Um, 